Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. Today we'll be continuing our missing character series, mainly because sometimes I paint a miniature and I kinda just want to talk about them. In this video we'll be discussing their lore, their rules on the tabletop and how they could be translated into Total War Warhammer. With today's character being Elseth von Draken, the Dark Lady of Null. To better introduce this character to those who might not be aware of her, we'll read over her entry into the Warhammer Fantasy 8th edition supplement, The Thrones of Chaos. Magistrix Elseth von Draken, Wizard of the Amethyst Order, the Dark Lady of Null, the Graveyard Rose. For three generations, the name of Elseth von Draken, Magistrix of the Amethyst College and Archwizard of the Law of Death, has been spoken of in hushed tones in the reeking tavern gutters and vaulted noble halls of Null alike. And for three generations, her lonely blackened tower has stood over at the edge of the Gardens of Moor on the outskirts of the great city and stories of the Graveyard Rose have been used to frighten recalcitrant children home before nightfall lest the Dark Lady snatch them up. Yet despite these stories, few have ever paused to think what exactly the admitted presence of Von Draken in the city actually means, and fewer yet could guess at her true power or influence. Furthermore, the few foolhardy or overenthusiastic witch hunters unaware of her relationship to the governing powers of Null, or too fanatically sure of their own righteousness to care, who have attempted to delve deeper into her business or storm her tower, have been swallowed up so completely that they have never been able to share anything that they have learned. The truth is that Elseth von Draken is but one in a long bloodline touched by the winds of magic. A bloodline that has produced both monsters and saviors in its time. She is one of the most powerful amethyst wizards of the age, but one who will have little to do with the daily machinations or power politics of the imperial colleges of magic, in which she was once a student and still in theory holds fealty for which many within its ranks are profoundly grateful, and with whom she now sits in an uneasy truce. Instead, she is an obsessive experimenter and mystic who goes where she will, and has collected and collated a storehouse of mystical artifacts and lore which she guards jealously, and has become so saturated with the force of Shaish, the amethyst wind of death, that there are some who whisper that she is no longer human at all, a theory perhaps given credence by her almost spectral, pallid aspect, which has remained unchanged for decades. Despite her reclusive nature, dividing her time it is said between her tower in Null and another like it hidden within the Grey Mountains, or in search of lost lore, she is however a true scion of the Empire, and the bane of its foes when they cross her path. She has long-standing pacts and alliances, both with the Church of Moor and the ruling council of Null to come to its aid in times of war, in return for their alliance in turn. Balthasar Gelt, current patriarch of the Imperial Colleges of Magic, is understandably wary of Von Draken's independence and power, and has long had his agents keep track of her where they can. Over the last score of years, there have been reported a dozen conflicts, both wildly known and hidden, where Von Draken had proved the victor against terrible enemies, such as the Maya Hulk Rawbones, who had been devouring whole villages along the River Sol and demanding a bloody tribute in young lives to the vampire Vashara of Lemire, who had sought to corrupt the noble Jagersbruck family of Feldorf and turn the city into a shadow realm of undeath. While Elseth von Draken continues to concern herself with her own affairs and stands as a protector of the Empire, Gelt must do no more than watch, 
But there are those beneath him in the hierarchy of wizards who fear the guilt suspicion of the powerful Von Draken may yet provoke a deadly conflict one day between them. During the crisis of the Chaos Host of Tamukan, Elsef von Draken appeared in the council of the Countess Emmanuel like a spectre of death itself. Gowned in robes so black as to appear as living darkness, and bearing a kneeing scythe so sharp it seemed to murder the still air. It was her counsel that the Countess Emmanuel took in forming up her armies to defend Null itself, rather than meet Tamukan in the open field of battle. And such was the fear that came with Elsef von Draken's presence, that few gainsaid her, despite the cost the strategy entailed in the lands, livestock, and human life. On the seventh day of the great battle, when Tamukon sought to raise up a great and nightmarish ritual to appease his dark god, and brought forth an unholy tide of demons to attack the city, Elsef von Draken took to battle, a back a carmine dragon. The dragon's wrath unleashed all-consuming blasts of a marathine lightning, while her magical power contested with the might of the servants of decay. After the battle, those who saw her claimed she had faded to no more than an insubstantial shadow from her trails, and it was years afterwards before she was seen abroad again, her pale and youthless aspect restored once more. Elsef is a rather interesting character, isn't she? Many speculated that she was a form of vampire. It was never outright confirmed, but the lore that goes around her more or less points to that. Where a character can easily look like she is dying, yet appear once again years later and still retain some youthful appearance. There are indeed a few vampires that fight on behalf of the Empire and some other human nations, so the idea of a death wizard who is also a vampire fighting on behalf of the Empire is actually quite possible. Now, on the tabletop, Elsef is a Lord character, nothing too special in terms of stats. She is a spellcaster after all, so no high strength, toughness values and so on but she was a level 4 wizard in the lore of death. What really set her apart from other characters was the fact that she had a special Carmine Dragon. The Carmine Dragon itself was extremely rare, and on the tabletop it was only used by Elsef herself I believe, which already gives her a point to Creative Assembly potentially creating her, as well we know they like dragons. But other than that, let's check out her special rules. She was a law master in the Law of Death, which basically means that she would have access to all the spells in the Law of Death. However, obviously every spellcaster has access to their own respective spells, so I am imagining a law master such as herself will be able to cast spells at a reduced winds of magic cost. She only had one proper special rule, that of Darkwalker, which basically translated as the fact that she was more or less a spectre, she was immune to psychology, and all two wound rolls would be minus one against her. A decent special rule, however there was a negative, that she would also suffer any negative effects that would damage demons or undead, for example the Law of Light exorcism attribute. What I can see done here is that she would be considered immune to psychology, and maybe she would have a higher than average ward save to attribute the fact that it's not easy to wound her. However, I'm assuming that she will also take increased damage from Law of Light and other spells that do damage against demons or undead. It makes sense thematically. Her Carmine Dragon mount also had a special rule, Coruscating Blast, which essentially is a breath weapon but can be used in the form of a cannon fire. It is a rather interesting special rule, but I imagine that the dragon itself in Total War Warhammer, should it ever get implemented, would just use it as a standard dragon breath attack. However, it should be incredibly armor piercing, as on the tabletop it would ignore armor from any model. Now, where Elsef became quite a unique lord is when you start taking her magical items into account. The first would be the Pale Scythe, a magic weapon which had the Killing Bro special rule, 
but also added a plus one to all her dispel rolls. I am assuming here that by unlocking this weapon, she would be much better in melee combat, though granted, you wouldn't want to have her in melee combat anyway, but you would also get the benefit of possibly extra miscast chance for any enemy armies that she may face against? I think that makes more or less sense. And lastly, she's got the Death's Timekeeper, where once per turn, on the tabletop of course, Elseth can re-roll a single dice of their choice, concerning her or her Carmine Dragon. So, what she can do here is re-roll an artillery dice, a saving throw, an attack, and so on. The way I see something like this being implemented for Total War Warhammer is that any abilities that she or her Carmine Dragon may have that may only be used a certain amount of times per turn could instantly refresh to their maximum once per battle. It's a rather interesting item on the tabletop considering that if she decided not to use the reroll, she could also regain a wound, so maybe this item could give her regeneration, but only as long as she hasn't used the ability. Once she uses the ability, she will not be able to regenerate for the rest of that battle. The character didn't have that many special rules, but then again, the campaign supplement that she featured in was heavily focused around chaos. But I think there's a good enough basis to start with to implement her as a legendary lord. Now speaking of which, how could she be implemented into the Total War Warhammer series? I'm imagining that Elseth would be added in eventually. Yes, Wissenland has an elect account, Emmanuel, but that character is rather unknown, and it's more than likely they'd probably add in Elseth as a replacement. Yes, I know this is kind of law-breaking, however, we have to take into account that Balthasar Gelt is currently the elect account of Solund, and Solund hasn't existed for hundreds of years. And to be honest, Elseth is rather well liked by the community. Barring a few people here and there, I always thought the character was rather interesting, so it would make sense for her to get her own spot in the sun, maybe even in a Tamu Khan themed DLC. Something rather simple, the maggot and the lady. You would have the maggot side being focused around chaos and Tamu Khan, and the lady obviously focusing around Elseth where perhaps her mechanics would feature around a non-seeable Emmanuel elect account of Wissenland, giving her commands as to who to declare war on, who to defend against, and so on. Yes, it is established that Elseth doesn't really take any orders, however, it would be in her best interest if she worked alongside Emmanuel, and this would be a nice way to feature the elect account too, without actually creating her as a character. In all honesty, if there's a choice between Elseth and Emmanuel, I'm gonna have to go with Elseth. But what do you guys think? But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like, or even subscribing to the channel, as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms, such as Facebook, Instagram, and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products, not just Warhammer, for 10 to 25% off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code, which is also in the description, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.